One of the most frustrating things for us on Fully Charged is some of this new technology is eye-wateringly expensive. So we're going to talk to you about energy hacks. After all, you spend tens of thousands of pounds on your energy bills over your lifetime. And you don't necessarily need a smart meter to tell you you're wasting money. The best investment though you can make surely in your house is your thermostat. We take them for granted, but they're the brain of your home heating system. And the modern multi-room smart thermostats are something else. So today, we're going to talk to Richard from Tardo about theirs. Richard, it's great to, to see you. Thanks for having us. Pleasure, Dan. Can you tell us about you know, why we should get a, a Tardo smart thermostat. Tardo's smart thermostat is a, is, a, is a device which connects to your heating system, to your gas boiler. It works on any home um, and will allow you to control your heating via the mobile app. The mobile app's very highly rated um, in, the, in both iOS and Android stores, but ultimately um, there's more to it than just controlling your heating via your mobile phone. Or the other devices we also offer is smart radiator thermostats. Now, if you look at what's, the, what's over the last 12 months with the pandemic, a lot of people working from home, are heating every room in their house when actually they only need to be heating maybe one or two rooms. So the smart radiator thermostats connect to existing radiator valves, uh, particularly TRV valves, which are the ones with the- Thermostatic radiator valves. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And then what that does is it allows you to then set a schedule, set a temperature, or call for heat to that particular radiator. And we've got real nice peace of mind that we're warm and comfortable, but we're not heating the other 10 radiators in our home at full power. That's a great feature, isn't it? The, the old thing was just put the heating on, put it on high, it's throughout the house, and actually you will waste a huge amount of energy by, by doing that. So tell me about the types of properties. Does, does, does Tardo work with, as well with a sort of three bedroom semi-detached as it, as it does with a, with a larger property? It works on any home. Like, right. So it works, so you, you could have a, like a one bedroom apartment and you would, um, and you, Tardo would connect to that, to that gas boiler in that in setup. Um, it also work in a, like a three bedroom semi or a much larger property. And it's all about how your heating system is set up and what you need. So some homes may have um, split systems. So an upstairs heating zone and a downstairs heating zone. So Tardo would be compatible with that setup. You may just have one thermostat in your home, like in a, in a, in a, in a typical flat or a house. Tardo would work with that setup as well. So we've got products to suit different heating setups for um, different circumstances. Another question I've got, a key question I think most people will be, how much does it cost and how much can you save? So in terms of the cost, it costs um, typically about 100, two, not 199 pounds, 200 pounds for the actual product to get it installed. The smart radiator uh, thermostats uh, retail at 69 pounds. Okay. Um, so typically, what we find is a customer would normally buy the smart thermostat and then they would um, upgrade to the multi-zone um, system once they've got it installed. Um, in terms of savings, um, it all depends on your, 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 your initial um, gas bill. If you look at the average dual fuel bill in the UK, it's about 1,200 pounds for a dual fuel energy um, uh, bill. But the typically a heating element of that bill would be about 75%. So 75% of your overall energy goes on heating your home. So Tardo did a study in 2019, not 2020 because we were, had um, a bit of a unique year with everyone working from home and heating on full power. But in 2019, we concluded that the average customer would save 22%. So that basically means that their boiler would not be on um, with Tardo when otherwise it was on with an old dumb thermostat under non-connected controls. So that savings would translate into quite a high proportion of your um, heating bill. And more importantly, you'd be saving energy, but also being 
kept warm. And that's the most important thing. People don't want to compromise energy saving for actually their comfort. And this has got the beauty of both worlds. So I'm convinced I'm, I'm going to get a smart thermostat. The big question that remains for me is someone who's not that handy at home is, is can I install it myself? And, and how easy is it? And how long does it take? Yeah, yeah it's a good, good, good question. I think everyone asks that question when they're on the, on the cusp of, of <laughs> making a, a product down. 90% of the customers actually DIY, self-install it themselves. But they do that because we make it easy for the customer. So we don't have you know, long manuals in the box where it's like, you know, you know, making flat pack furniture, which is really frustrating. We simply say, start, create your account, enter the make and model of your boiler and the make and model of your heating thermostat or your current thermostat. So that goes into our database and then pulls out customized graphical instructions step by step per your current setup. So you're not reading general guides, you're reading customized instructions for your specific heating system. And how long might that take me? Um, I mean, I'm particularly useless, so how long might that take? <laughs> so typically anywhere, I'd say between half an hour and an hour, you would get it done. Um, I wouldn't say any longer than an hour, to be honest. Fully Charged has got lots of international viewers as well as people here in the, in the UK. Yeah. Are, are you an international business? Can I get your smart thermostat everywhere? We are. Yeah, yeah. So Tardo, Tardo was founded in 2011. So we've been around for nearly 10 years and it's founded in Munich. So we're actually um, you know, one of Europe, Europe's most dominant smart thermostat um, players. Um, so we've got about 200 people employed in Munich, all of our developers, our hardware engineers, our software engineers, are all, and, and our customer support are all based there. Um, we sell it across um, 15 markets, ranging from Spain up to the Nordics, um, and, um, and, and obviously the UK. Fantastic, so you could be saving energy straight away. in half an hour. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Richard, for today. Pleasure, you're welcome. Thank you. Of course, Tardo isn't the only technology available. So if you are shopping around, I suggest you also check out Honeywell, Homely, Radbot, Genius Hub, and a word to the wise, if you are looking to install other technologies in the future, such as air source heat pumps, it's a really good idea to check your smart thermostat is compatible with those and your system is future-proofed. Until coal-fired power stations were largely phased out in the UK, only 35% of the initial energy would reach your plug socket. But sustainable energy tariffs are set to change that. Now we're going to talk to Witch to get their take on switching to a clean energy supplier and whether it makes sense for you economically and environmentally. Hi, Gareth. Great to meet you. Gareth is here from Witch to tell us uh, more about energy tariffs. And I, I think if you're a consumer now, you're aware that there's a lot of choice. But with that choice, it can be difficult to decide who is the best energy provider. And Fully Charged is all about sustainable energy. So can you, can you kind of talk us through the, the variety of choices that exist right now? Where do we get our energy from? Fossil fuels and now renewable energy as well and renewable sources. And Think back to four years ago, around 9% of the energy tariffs that were out there were classified as green. Today, that's more than half. So there's just been a huge explosion of options for consumers who care about renewable energy and sustainability when it comes to their energy choices. They can actually choose to have their electricity supplied from a renewable source. Uh, so we, we've come a long way very, very quickly. Okay, so from, from Witch's perspective, Gareth, you know, what could you recommend and where do you begin when it comes to energy efficiency in, in homes? There are real micro changes you can make in your home and in your behaviour that could go an awful long way. We all know that making our homes more energy efficient could end up being really expensive. Talking about things like cavity wall insulation, draft exclusion, they're quite an investment, but changing your light bulbs to LED, for example. That is such a small and simple change that could save you a significant amount of money throughout the year. So if, you've, if you don't have those light bulbs in, we always recommend just go and do it. It's a really, really small investment. It's a very simple change, but it can make a, a significant difference in your electricity consumption. I think the other thing that we've seen, certainly from our members, is a, a growing demand for smart thermostats and the, uh, just the ability that 
provides to you to, to kind of manage your energy usage at home, tailor it to your actual needs and just stay on top of it. And, and the, the, the barriers to entry um, to purchase one of these smart thermostats has fallen significantly. It, it's, it's really quite cheap to get a very basic smart thermostat have an app on your phone and control when your lights go on or, or when your heating comes on. Um, and, and they're the things, if, if you're not going to spend 10 or 15,000 pounds doing some serious fix-ups to your home to make it more energy efficient, we're talking about, in the case of light bulbs, a few pounds. In the case of a smart thermostat, maybe 100 pounds or 200 pounds that could have a transformational effect on, on how you interact with your energy usage. Of course, once you've switched energy tariff, you might want to make the most of the money that you're paying for. So one thing we'd recommend is checking out your phantom load and reducing that. If you don't know what that means, just think about all the smart appliances and other appliances you've got on around your house. They might be in standby mode, but they're still sucking energy all of the time. Some of these suppliers are different to others. so. You know, for some, if you invest in them, you might find that they're building solar farms or, or wind turbines. For others, they're doing interesting pioneering work. But how do you how do you work out who's doing the most and how that squares with your values and, and what you want to be buying as a consumer? Green doesn't necessarily mean good when it comes to energy tariffs. And, th and this is the really challenging thing for you if, you're, if you don't know how this market works, but you do want to make, in your view, an ethical choice about where you're getting your energy from, you really do have to navigate a bit of alphabet soup. So you can get an energy tariff from a provider that owns a wind farm, owns a solar farm, generates electricity from that, puts it through the pipes and puts it into your home. Bingo, you, you know, you, you are basically funding renewable energy by taking that tariff. Others, they don't own those kinds of assets and infrastructure, but they're purchasing genuine uh, electricity that's been genuinely um, generated from renewable sources. And they, they're doing other things to make sure that we have a sustainable future, as you mentioned. And, and you might think, well, that actually matches my morals. And you know, one of the decisions you have to make when you're choosing an, an energy tariff is price. You know, can you afford the, the, the monthly direct debit? If you're going to a renewable source, it could cost you a bit more money. But are you willing to pay that additional premium in order to have that peace of mind that you're making a difference? So the perception is, you mentioned it earlier, that some of these suppliers are more expensive than traditional energy suppliers. Is that a generalisation? There's some truth in that or, or does it vary? You can pay more for them, but each tariff is different. It depends how you're taking it. Is it an online only tariff? Is it a tariff that um, gives you a discount because you have a smart meter installed in your home? Are you paying your um, tariff by a monthly direct debit? These are all factors that will impact on the actual price that you pay. So yes, there might be a premium for you to um, get your energy from a renewable source, but there are lots of ways you can carve that price down by choosing not to have paper statements, for example. That's a way that you can get a cheaper tariff by agreeing to have a smart meter installed into your home. That's another way you might be able to cut the cost. And indeed, setting up a direct debit rather than paying a bill on a monthly basis, you will find you'll, you'll get a discount for that. So each tariff is different. You need to, it, this is the challenge as well. You need to know how you're comfortable paying for it, what infrastructure you might need, um, uh, who the best company to go with, who's going to give you great customer service, what the right price point for you is as well. So it's, it's not just as easy as buying a, a tariff off the shelf or, or indeed, you know, like the old days, answering the door and, and switching your energy tariff from a salesman. You know, those days are long gone, but um, it used to be quite a, a quick and easy decision to switch tariff. Now, particularly if you, if you want uh, to get your energy from a renewable source, there's lots for you to consider. So it's something we would recommend to people to, to, to look around and to, and to switch to a, a cleaner energy supplier. But how do, they, how do they go about that? Do you have reference tools on, on your website or, or do you recommend people talk to the suppliers directly? It doesn't matter whether it's your energy tariff, your car insurance, you know, your, your credit cards. If you're going to switch to something, put in the work. That's why I always recommend set aside an hour or so, get your bills together, find out how many kilowatt hours you've been using, um, 
arm yourself with that information and then get on price comparison sites. Yes, which operates a price comparison site will tell you really clearly um, uh, whether or not you're going to get a green tariff, but there are lots of other price comparison sites out there that you could use. And, and you might want to use a, a number of them because you, you could find you could get exclusive deals on, on certain price comparison sites that you, you can't find anywhere else. So that's definitely something to consider. Enter in all of your details, find out exactly um, how much energy you use and, and perhaps forecast how much you're going to use in the future. Things have changed during the pandemic. We're all working from home. Our energy usage has skyrocketed, hopefully offset by the, the drop in commuting costs for many people. But yes, we're using a lot more energy. And so a bill from a year ago is not gonna be the same as a bill from uh, 2020 into 2021. So bear that in mind when you're shopping around. So the UK energy market has become much more competitive over the last decade or so. We can see the changing uh, the changing sources of, of, of energy that, that we use, moving away from coal towards wind, etc. So it seems to me that competition is working, but, but what are you seeing? Do you, do you think the energy system in the UK is getting better as a result of competition amongst these uh, energy suppliers? What we've seen over the past few years is a, a real dent in the dominance of the big six, the big six energy suppliers. And, and not only have we seen a, you know, an, a kind of explosion of smaller players, which gives consumers much more choice, we've seen a, a, a kind of healthy middle ground of firms that have built up a, a decent side customer base, but have made a real commitment to do something different. And the great thing about that is it forces the big six to change their practices and to up their game. That's great, Gareth. Thanks for such a concise explanation of what is a complex and changing marketplace. You're welcome. Whatever your eventual choice, when it comes to heating, hot water and power, if you want to take control, there are lots of options. In the next episode, we're going to take a closer look at how your house can store and generate its own power. If you have been, thanks for watching.